Hi, it's James again. Tonight I want to talk to you about a different subject, something I've made that was concocted or created at the behest of my wife. And what it is, it's a bike rack or bicycle rack. Her boss, a good friend of hers, is severely into biking. And I don't mean mountain biking or something like it. The Tour de France style bike riding with the super high tensile strength alloy bikes with you know you can pick it up with two fingers and carry it around it weighs nothing but it's like super strong and super fast and that's his exercise and hobby so what i found on a website there's a guy in either france or england i'm not really sure where that makes these bike racks but he designs them to hang on walls and what he does is he plans them out where you have a setup where you can hang your bicycle on the wall. Now let me grab the camera and I'm gonna move it where we can take a look at what I've got. This is my version of the bike rack. You can see at the top the whole design and the, the reason my wife thought this was so cool was and excuse the lawn chairs and all stacked it behind it they're just there but anyway the reason she thought it was so cool is because here in kentucky one of the things that a lot of people do and i don't get it but hey to each their own is they take the skull of a deer and they mount it on a board and they leave the antlers attached my wife thought this was so cool because of the setup of this rack because of the setup of this rack because the handlebars kind of resemble the antlers of the deer and a seat mounted here kind of resembles the skull piece and so mounted on a board originally I built this so we could hook it on a wall we went over to affix it to a wall where she works and her boss is so that he'd have a place to hang his bicycle of course a racing bike that's really high end no kickstand you know kickstands just extra weight doesn't need so this will give him some place to hang his bike but when we tried to hang it on the wall, the walls in the building there are constructed with aluminum studs. And they're just not wide enough and not sturdy enough for me to affix that to the wall. So that brought me to a different idea. And it finally dawned on me, he might want to move it at some point. He might not like where it was placed. So I thought, well, how can we solve that? We had the stem of a bicycle, and it was affixed to a board to make like a trophy type thing. So what other methods? And then it dawned on me, pipe, using pipe. So let me back up a little bit with the camera. And I'll zoom out a little bit. Now you can see the whole thing. And if you give me a second. So now you can see the whole thing here. It's completely finished now. And what we've got is we've got the pipe up to this point right here where my fingers are is all three quarter inch pipe. And what we have is we have end caps, we have four inch sections, an elbow, five inch section, a T, a, I want us to say if I remember right, it's a 15 inch section here. And then they're both the same on each side, you know. So a total of four end caps, three quarter inch, four four inch sections, three quarter inch pipe, four elbows, three quarter inch pipe, four five inch sets of three quarter inch pipe, two elbows that are three quarter inch, two sections of 15 inch three quarter inch. And that got us to right here. Now in the middle, I wanted this to go up because I wanted the stem of the handlebars to literally slide down inside the pipe and mount so that um, when it was affixed to it, it would provide a stand. So I needed one inch pipe here or at least a one inch adapter, but I thought the look would be better if it was solid all the way down. I originally looked for a T that would have two three quarter outlets on each end and a one inch outlet going up and I couldn't find them. So I ended up getting these adapters or reducers and went from three quarters or one inch down to three quarters or three quarters up to one inch and then I put a one inch pipe going up. Now of course the pipe came threaded on both ends so the top was threaded. So I took, started with the hacksaw, then switched over to the sawzall or reciprocating saw, whatever you'd like to call it. And I cut the threaded end off and then I filed it and ground it to where it was nice and smooth so that no burrs, nothing to get cut on. And the cleaning was the worst part of this whole project. 
I chose not to use galvanized pipe because of numerous reasons. One, galvanized is more expensive. Two, and it's not that much more expensive. So if you want to use galvanized, if you want to make something like it's good. But the second reason is the galvanized I didn't think would hold the paint well. So I got the pipe, put it all together, and, but it had a coating. It was like, uh, it's iron pipe, but it had like a rubberized coating sprayed onto it. I wanted to get that off. Well, I at first thought I could just take it off with like maybe mineral spirits or something. So I tried that. That was an epic fail. Didn't work at all. I finally ended up putting a brush on my small hand grinder and I literally just sit there and ground every bit of the pipe until I had rubbed that finish off and that was a job. It took me, I was working maybe 30, 40 minutes a night and it took me three or four times. So it took me two or three hours to do that to get all the finish off of it. Once I had all that coating off the pipe, I wiped it down well with mineral spirits and I didn't use any sandpaper, I didn't see the need. After wiping it down with mineral spirits, then I wiped it down again with clean rag. Once I was satisfied the pipe was clean enough to accept the paint, my wife had chose this hammered metal paint and you can't really tell it probably in the camera. In fact, I'll move the camera up closer and see if we can see it better, but it is really cool. I'm not sure how well you can see. You can see it's really shiny, but maybe you can see the texturing in it too because it's got that like hammered metal look, which makes it really kind of neat. It's not exactly a cheap project because of the hardware. She got actual racing bike hardware, so I'm not sure how much the handlebars and all that cost, but I'm going to say the entire project now is probably two or three hundred dollars. No, it's probably four or five hundred dollars total. But it's a really neat project to build, and if you have someone, if you have someone, a family member, or someone that's really into cycling, loves the Tour de France, loves to cycle, and has a bike, if you want to make them a rack they can move around, this is an alternative. The original plans are somewhere on the web by somebody over in Europe, and he makes just the board, and he takes old handlebars and a seat, and then he wraps the handlebars to make the upper part. He sells that for like, I think $250, $300 just to make that. And of course, you know, you can see I used a piece of wood and it's been rubbed down with wood oil to make it have a nice finish to it. But making it the way I have here, you've got it in such a way the person can hang their bike on it, but they can also pick it up and take it wherever they want. That pretty much concludes the video on the bike stand project. Of course, I'm not going to post this on YouTube until after we give this gift to the uh, person it's intended for because I don't really want to spoil the surprise.